Praise the Lord. Good evening and welcome to the last day in this wonderful year of 2021. God has been so faithful and so just, and we are so appreciative to be able to stand before you and to just thank the Lord for allowing us this time again to meet, to come together, and to worship and praise him. This is the last day before the beginning, and we just thank God for it. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for this year. We thank you, Lord God, for all that we have seen, all that we have experienced, Father God. More so, Father, we thank you for who you are and the fact that you still are on the throne and you keep your promises and your word. God, I thank and I praise you for this day. I thank you, Lord God, because it is so surreal considering all that have passed away, even today, God. But Father, we first and foremost want to say thank you. Lord, we ask that you forgive us for any and everything that we have done that is not pleasing to you. Lord God, we repent. Father, forgive us. Wash and cleanse us. We thank you for your son's blood that covers us. We thank you, Lord God, that all sickness, disease, and our sins were nailed to the cross. And Father, we thank you that you rose again for our redemption. Lord, we can't thank you enough for that. Now, Father, we thank you again for everything that we've experienced, for every trial, tribulation, every strain and strain of, of, of COVID. Lord God, we thank you for those that you allow to live to see this day. And Father, we thank you for those that you allow to be in our presence for the time that you allowed it. You are the author and finisher of our faith. You write the story. So Father, instead of us being in mourning, Lord, help us to rejoice because you've given us that time with loved ones and with family. You've given us that time to spend. And Father God, more so, you've given us time yet to declare your glory and to be on this earth and to continue to do your will. Father, help us to be more dedicated, to be more understanding and in tune and on your frequency, Father. Help us to continue, Lord God, even though we are going into a new year, to continue to still refocus on you and to keep our eyes set on you and not on these things in this earth, Lord God. We thank you that we are in this world, but we are not of it. You have called us out as your people. This is your kingdom, and we are your people. So, God, we just ask that you have your way in this service this evening. Lord God, the word that you are going to speak this evening, we are open, attentive, and expecting for a word that will help us, Lord God, to go into our next to be prepared for what you have for us moving forward. God, we don't count it lightly, but we say thank you. Have your way in worship. We ask, Lord God, that you be with us and that your presence be here. Because without you, Father, we can pack it up and go home. So, God, we just welcome you in this place. And we say, have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It is truly good to be in the house of the Lord. God has really blessed us. He's an awesome God. Oh, yes, he is. 2021 is about to end, and 2022 is about to enter. The amazing part is nobody knows who's going to 2022 and who's not going to 2022. We may be standing here for Talking about God and getting ready to praise Him, but it's only God who knows who will. But it's amazing to know that we still are in 2021. And I spoke to my family in Ghana on my way to church, and they have already transitioned into 2022. So they are rejoicing. I'm hearing the ship blowing horns and the, the firecrackers that are happening, the, the, the thunders and stuff. Everything is just going off. They are celebrating the new year. We still are in 2021. Isn't God good? Oh my, he is too good. You know what? I, I don't know about y'all, but I, I, feel, I feel this way. You are welcome into this place. You are welcome 
Into this broken vessel you decide to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your Oh. 
You can't end the year, right, without worshiping God, right? See, that's the problem. We always want, give me, give me, help me, help me, bless me, bless me. But we don't want to take time to worship Him. And you see, absence of worship leaves an empty heart. See, because if you want to see your heart full, learn how to worship God. And you see how full your heart will be. Because you cannot worship God and truly worship Him with an empty heart. Because a thankful heart is always a happy heart. But you see, that's where we miss God because we don't know that the more thankful you are, the more happier you'll be because the more He's going to keep filling you up with His praise. Amen? Because all I know is, I just feel like something good is about to happen. Oh, I just feel like something good.
Jesus, we have the victory. There is no greater victory than that of us being in Jesus Christ. Who can stand before you when you have the God that we serve before you? No one, nothing, nothing, nothing can by any means separate you from Christ when you know who stands before you. We're going to read our foundational scripture, followed by a couple of announcements, and we're going to get back to just loving on the Lord and appreciating him for all that he's done throughout this year. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Now, do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. That is Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. I implore you to study this scripture, to repeat this scripture, to meditate on this scripture because if there is ever a time where this scripture needs to be prevalent and, and, and real and, and visual in our lives, it is today. God bless you. We will have our first service of the year this Sunday. We thank and praise God. We're looking forward to it. Again, we have an expectation. That is my goal this year is to continually have an expectation, but to also make sure that I am completing my assignment. So I'm going to expect God to do, but I'm also going to do my part. We will be here at 1130 Sunday morning ready and willing to do what it is that God is saying to do and to find out what God is saying for us as we enter into the new year. We will have Wednesday Bible study. It starts at 7 p.m. You're more than welcome to come in. We're just preparing for the harvest. We're preparing for you to come to be able to sit among one another and to learn and to fellowship. Yes, we are in COVID. Yes, we do know that things are going on. And yes, we must practice the safest COVID practices available, but we will not deny the house of God. Until they shut us down or tell us to stop or until the Lord tells us otherwise, we hope to meet you here. We also fast on Fridays from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. You are more than welcome to join in, especially now that we're going into the new year. We also will be going into a church-wide or corporate 21-day fast. The Chief Apostle will give you more information about that, I'm sure, as we go into the new year. Also, God has been blessing tremendously on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. We have Insight Bible Study, Insight International Bible Studies. It is so awesome, this Insight International Ministries. I'm excited, y'all. I'm sorry. I can't even get my words out. But the meat and the information that we're gaining from it, it is like none other. God is breaking, allowing us to break down the scripture and to understand what our role is so that we're in this walk, but we understand what we're doing. It's no need in having an assignment, but not knowing what your part is in the assignment. Please tune in. They are on Facebook, they are on Instagram, and they have been uploaded correctly now to YouTube. So you are more than welcome to go on. We are New Faith Tabernacle Church. It is still listed under that, but you're looking for Insight International Ministries. God bless you. May he keep you. And let's get back into worship. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. And on, on, on that note, I still want to encourage you to really tune in on Tuesdays at 7 and on Thursdays at 7 because God is doing great work. Uh, I remember the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir sings a song that says, He's still doing a great thing in me. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm hungry for things that, for things that God is doing because uh, He's doing so much great things. Uh, this past, actually that was yesterday. We still, uh, 
rejoicing, seriously rejoicing over what God did. We have our special guest on here yesterday, Dr. Benjamin Gaither, who took us to a whole entire different level in leadership, especially dealing with the established gift, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. Then he took it to a whole entire different level to give us a deeper insight into the Word of God so that you don't walk around acting strange because now you know. I'm trying to use better words. Strange. So now you know. I don't know about you. I know about me. I had an awesome time because that, that's my brother in the Lord, that's that's my father in the Lord, I mean, that's my man, he's, he's awesome. And we have other guest speakers that will be coming in at different times, I'm telling you, on Tuesday nights, on Thursday nights, you do not want to miss, also you don't want to miss Sunday mornings. 2022, God is ever to do great work. I am extremely excited, I don't know if I'm going or coming, because I'm not, a part of me is saying like, we need to continue what we're doing. A part of me want to just keep telling you. <laughs> but you know what? Because of that, I can honestly say, because he lives, I can fail.
Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. Now to explain that, we reference Deuteronomy 21-23, which says, You must not leave the body hanging on the pole overnight. Be sure to bury it that same day. Because anyone who is hung on a pole is under God's curse. You must not desecrate the land the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. So again, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. So that by faith, we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Brothers and sisters, let me take an example from everyday life. Just as no one can set aside or add to a human covenant that has been duly established, so it is in this case. The promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. Scripture does not say, and to the seeds, meaning plural, Many that many people, but into your seed, meaning one person who is Christ. What I mean is this. The law introduced 430 years later does not set aside the covenant previously established by God and thus do away with the promise. For if the inheritance depends on the law, then it no longer depends on the promise. But God in his grace gave it to Abraham through a promise. Why then was the law given at all? It was added because of transgressions until the seed to whom the promise referred had come. The law was given through angels and entrusted to a mediator. A mediator, however, implies more than one party. But God is one. It is the law, therefore, is the law, therefore, opposed to the promises of God? Absolutely not. For if a law had been given that could impart life, then righteousness would certainly have come by the law. But the scripture has locked up everything under the control of sin, so that what was promised, being given through faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. That was Galatians 3, 13 through 22. May God bless you and please open yourself and prepare for the word. Amen. Mm, mm, mm. 53 minutes left. Don't know why. That means I'm restricted today. I got to try and complete this in 53 minutes. Praise God. I know. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. To God be the glory. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you, Lord, I pray. That you remove me and fill me with your spirit. For the most important, I pray that you open up our spiritual ears and our spiritual hearts to hear and to receive from you. Shame on us if we don't allow our spirit to receive from you. So, for that, I pray that you prick our spirit and give us an unction within us to be yearning for your word because we cannot leave this year and enter into a new year with the same issues that we have because he says, All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Father, ask for the prayer to enter into this new year. Help us to eradicate anything that is not of you in our life this year. So as we enter into 2022, we will not enter into that this new year coming with the same drama, baggages, and necessary issues in our life. But we will enter 
praising your name, thanking you for all that you've done. Do and get ready to do for us. We bless your name. Now, Father, we ask that you speak to us. Do a work that you've never done before. Do something new today. We bless you. We thank you. We have high expectation from you for what you get ready to do. We see your son, Jesus, precious name. And Father, you are welcome. We invite you to stay with us. Don't pass through, Father. Have a seat and move among us. It's in your son, Jesus, precious name that we pray. Amen. I should let Bishop read preach this Sunday. You want to get somebody off your pulpit fast? Tell them to preach. <laughs> to God be the glory. I have not seen this woman move fast enough. You know, We heard Bishop Deshaun read our foundation, foundational scripture. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. And it says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Mm -hmm. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Hmm. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Listen to me. I am making a way in the wilderness and streams. The word streams have an S at the end of it. He did not say stream. He says streams. That means it's more than one. It's also more than two. It's more than three. It's more than four. It's just countless. Hmm. I'm going somewhere with this. I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. It's hard to find a way in the wilderness. You ever been to the desert? If you ever walk in the desert, the wind blows. All footprints is wiped off. So if you're trying to follow somebody's footprint to figure out your way out, you are in a world of trouble. Because the split second the wind blows, it covers every footprint. There is no print for you to follow. But yet, God says, listen here. If you listen to me, if you listen to me, if you listen to me, I am going to make a way in the desert for you. God, how's that possible? I can make a way out of nowhere. If you listen to me, I am going to make a way out of nowhere. Now, Chief, didn't Bishop read Galatians 3.13 to Galatians 3, 13 to 22. Yes, she did. So why are you reading this scripture and spending time on this scripture? Because that's the foundation of scripture. Well, if I don't give you foundation, what I'm about to do, you will miss the whole thing. Amen. Chief, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Check this out. Many people don't know this about new faith. I guess I could go there too, right, Bishop? Our statement of faith says something like this. Yeah, not like this, but it says this. In the night, I remember your name, O Lord, and I will keep your Lord. This has been my practice. I obey your precepts. You are my portion, O Lord. I have found, excuse me, I have, I have promised to obey your laws or your words. I have sought your face with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promises. And remember your word to your servant, for you have given me hope. Amen. Remember your word to your servant, for you have given me 
hope. Remember your word to your servant, Lord, for you have given me hope. Chief, you don't too much. You read the foundation of scripture. Bishop has read Galatians 3, 13 to 22. Now you're going to give us the statement of faith. And you tell us that you say, remember your word to your servant. For you have given me hope. Chief, what are you trying to come up with? What are you going with this? This is the problem. See, because this has always been the problem. This is always the beginning of the problem. Because we don't know where we're going. We don't understand where we're going. And I was watching this thing on the rear. On the rear, and then this guy gets up to go somewhere, and his governor says, Where are you going? I don't know. Who are you going with? I don't know. Whoever wanna go. Who, who ever wanna go? What you gonna do? I don't know. You gonna eat? I hope so, because I'm hungry. So where you gonna go? I don't know. So where you gonna go eat? I don't know. Why? Because if I knew, there would be no need wondering who's going to go with me. The reason why I don't know because I didn't plan this and because I did not plan this, I don't know who's going to go with me. And without a plan, we lose focus. See, many times, Tony will get hungry and he says, Chief, I'm going to go, go get something. Which one will eat? I don't know. It's quite interesting for him to tell me he does not know. So why are you hungry? Because if my behind is hungry, I'm going to show you what is going to come out of my mouth. Burger King. Chick-fil-A. Bless you. Firehouse sub. Fireside. Fireside. Oh, then there's firehouse sub. Then there's fireside. And don't make me get into my mood. I will put ice on you in the blink of an eye. Find me some ice. Because I'm hungry. And when I open my mouth and said I'm hungry, at this point, I have come up in my head what I want to eat. Chief, where you going with this? It's the end of the year. I'm not trying to go in the way. I'm trying to stay on track. So you're not going in the way? Uh-uh. So what you doing? I'm staying on track. Why are you staying on track? Because if I go somewhere, I'll miss what God is trying to do. He has to stay on track, so I'm staying on track. Chief, why are you staying on track? You're not making sense. We need to go somewhere in order for us to get to 2022. Don't you understand? If you go somewhere, you will miss the appointed time, and you will miss 2022, and you will be stuck still in 2021. Everybody else will be rejoicing in 2022, and you will be living in 2021 because you went somewhere. Chief, so what you saying? I said, I'm staying on track. So where's the track? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> the fan feels good, but it's bothering my sign. It's extremely. To God be the glory. It is hot. I don't know about y'all. Somebody told me it was going to be cold this evening. So I was anticipating the nice cold weather. Make me feel good. I came out of my car with the AC on and I was sweating. Walk from the car to the building, I was sweating. I got in the building, I really started sweating. That is not going anywhere with me because it will make me get off track. Anybody that knows anything about me knows I can't do good with heat and stay on track. Amen? Amen. But let me show you something. It says Christ redeemed us from what? The curse 
of the law by becoming a curse for us. <laughs> for it is written. For it is written. This here. Anytime you hear for it is written, it's an assurance. You need to put that somewhere that you cannot erase it. It's a definite assurance that, okay, no matter what happens, nothing changes. It's not going anywhere. It is written. When Satan came and tempted Jesus Christ, he says, for it is written. Satan can't stand when you know the word. People who don't know the word does not understand that it is written. So when they fight enemy, I think the Bible says this. You think? Where? I think. Where? Tell me. I think. Hold on, let me go find my Bible. No, I don't need to go find my Bible. For David says, Thy way have I eaten. And it became the joy and the rejoicing of my soul. You're supposed to eat the word of God so much that it becomes the joy and the rejoicing of, of your soul. So when the enemy comes to attack, I pour Jesus Christ because you become one with the word of God. Oh, chief. I thought you said you're staying on track. I am on track. I'm not trying to go anywhere. I'm staying on track. Why? See, if I'm on track, what happens on being on the track? The Lord Jesus is on the track with me. And he's the main train that pulls. So wherever he goes, that's where I'm going. He can't go anywhere without me. Because I'm attached to his train. So I'm on track. He moves, I moves. He stops, I stop. Chief, what do you mean? See, the problem we have is we try to go somewhere without him. Notice what Jesus says. For I myself cannot do anything without my Father. Yes. Chief, what are you saying? I didn't say that. Jesus said it. He says, For I myself cannot do anything without my Father. Come again. Oh, yes. Thank you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Chief forgot. That's why deep is sitting there looking at me like, hallowed be thy name. His kingdom ain't came. Please pick up your Bible with me. I forget our uh, Bible decoration. If you have your Bibles in your hand, please forgive me. Let's just <laughs> recite our Bible decoration. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can do what it says I My goal today. My goal today is to know the voice of God, to understand my assignment, and to walk in my call. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. My goal today is to know the voice of God, to understand my assignment, and to walk in my call. Let us give God a hand clap of praise. See, Jesus says, I myself can do absolutely not a single thing without my Father. So where on earth do I think I'm going without him? Yes, sir. My assignment is to stay on track, connected to him. Because when he moves, I move. But that's the engine that controls this ship. I can't move unless he moves. He moves, I move. Let me say it again. While I still have some time left in 2021. Lord Jesus, hear me, hear me, hear me. I do not want you to do a single thing in 2022 without me or new faith. Amen. I'm very serious, Lord. Now one thing, you cannot, and I do not want you to do a single thing, Lord. Without me, or new faith. Amen. Whatever you do, I'm on board. You said go, I go. You said sit, I sit. You said stand, I stand. You said jump, I jump. You said pray, I pray. You said fast, I fast. You said eradicate, I will eradicate. 
Why? Because when you say, I want to be there, and I'm doing with you, you fit for me doing with you. So, Chief, where are you going with this? I'm giving you key points before I do what I'm about to do. Because, see, here's the problem. We often get ahead of ourselves and do stuff that the Lord has not instructed us to do. And when we get ahead of ourselves, we become a curse. Oh, shut up, Gordon. Let me repeat myself. We often do stuff that we have not been told to do and we get ahead of ourselves. And when we do stuff outside the will of the Lord Jesus Christ, we become what? A curse. Okay, you don't believe me. Let me just say it. Okay. For Christ redeemed us, or should I say Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law because, actually, by, from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written. Okay, why can't I get past this part? Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. Now, <laughs> here we go again with that us stuff. Us. Us. Everybody say us. us. It's an assistant God, isn't it? Christ became a curse. See, you can't even say the curse without saying us. See, you curse with the us. Us in there, and you can't even say Jesus Christ without saying us. Say Jesus with the us. A curse with the us. You can't say Jesus without saying us. You can't say a curse without saying us. And he redeemed us by becoming a curse for us. Us for us. How about that? He became us for us. Chief, it is an us for us. Yeah. Read it again. He became us for us. A curse for us. Because we do stuff to get ourselves in the curse. He didn't do it. So why did he become a curse? For this written. Curse is everyone who is hanged on the pole. Did he hang on the pole? Yes, he did. Jesus hang on the pole. P.O.P. Except for he didn't do P.O.P. He did that. H.O.P. Hang on the pole. See, those of you who knows the joke, they start laughing. Those who don't know the joke did not get this end. Oh, what? The P.O.P. H.O.P. What is that? Don't worry about P.O.P. But Jesus did H.O.P. Hang on the pole. Don't worry about it. For those of you with your nosy self, I'm not saying what POP means. It's an inside joke. You gotta be here and new faith to understand it. Praise God. Jesus did it. HOP, hang on a pole. Why? Because it became a curse for us. So that we can be what? Free from our own sin. But he says, He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might become to might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Now wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. What promise? When God gave the promise, were you there? Did you go to the assembly call? Were you at the dinner table? Did you go hunting for the meat? When you did, you go fetch any water. When you doing anything when the promise was given. So what promise are they talking about? Oh, do you know something interesting? That goes to tell us that many a times God has a blessing for us that we're not even aware of. Here's a promise given to Abraham who said you. Abraham was not Gentile. We Gentiles. And the Bible says, the promise given to Abraham is now being available to us through Christ Jesus. Wait a minute. Why? God, speak to me. Because I need to say this exactly how you said it. Brothers and sisters, let me take an example from everyday life. Just 
As no one can set aside or add to a human covenant that has been duly established, so it is in this case. The promise was spoken to Abraham and his seed. Scripture does not say, and this, excuse, excuse, scripture does not say, and to so, meaning many people, many people back to your what see, meaning one person who is Christ. Mm. Mm. Verse 18 says, For if the inheritance depend on the law, then it is then it no longer depends on the promise, but God in his grace gave to Abraham through promise, through a promise. So if the inheritance depends on the law, my grandfather had money. He does the English I use, had. It's past. Because he's no longer alive. When he died, he did not take one cent with him. He had money. That man has so much money when money smell, he knew what it smelled like. I knew what it smelled like. If you hang around him long enough, he knew what it money smelled like. Because he had money. But the promises that he made that hinges on the law of our country kept his family from receiving everything that he had. Chief, what do you mean? Listen. For if the inheritance depends on the law, <laughs> By law, you just missed the whole thing. Because Abraham is a Jew, we Gentiles. The promise goes to the Jews. That's by law. By law, the promise goes to the Jews. It does not go to the Gentiles. It goes to the Jews because why? The Jews were the chosen ones. Oh, chief. We're not saved by the law, we're saved by grace, not of work, lest anyone should boast. Okay, that sounds good. It sounds real good. But faith without work is also dead. So you can say, I'm covered by Abraham's promise. Keep talking. Now, faith is substance of what? Evidence of things, what? Okay. So my problem is, that's what you just said. Now faith is. Now faith is. That's an action. So here is an inheritance that hinges on the law. So if the law is what it is, then where does that leave you and I? Oh, chief, why are you messing with me? I'm trying to make sense of what you're saying because you're not making sense. Bishop, I'm not making sense. Sorry, am I making sense? Pastor Bree, am I making sense? You sure? Deep says I'm making sense. You know, when deep talks, I take that serious. The deep, he be taking serious though. See that look he got? No, he be sitting there looking at you. Me and Morgan, you making sure that you stay in the world. But he want to make sure you don't come out of it. And I, I love that part about him. That he's staying too. He want to make sure you stand with the Lord. But can I ask you a question? If the promise hinges on the Lord, where does that leave you and I? Because now there's something interesting. 2021, God says, get the church to refocus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh. This is what God says. 2022 is the year of double blessing, double anointing. To those who listen to me. Oh, Chief, you messing me up. See, 2021, he says, refocus on the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, and anything you ask in my name, I will what? Okay, Chief, what you talking about? My grandfather had a lot of grandchildren. There was a stipulation that was put in his law. You won't get from my grandfather 
when you show yourself faithfulness. If you show yourself faithful to him. Not because you are his grandchild doesn't mean that he's going to give you something. You have to show yourself worthy of being a grandchild to receive something. I watch out my brothers and sisters and cousins trying to play around my grandfather and think because they are grandchildren they are going to receive. Old man, side 14, showed he's truly old man, side 14. He gave wisdom. He would sit and laugh at you because no matter what you did, your relationship with them did not change until your heart changed. What do you mean? Just because you are his grandchild did not give you access to what he has if your heart does not change. Chief, what you talking about? Just because you're a Christian does not give you right to receive anything from God unless you have a heart that is yielded towards God. Just because the wolf put on a sheep clothing does not make the wolf a sheep. It's just a wolf in sheep clothing. So just because he says I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian doesn't mean that you're going to heaven. <laughs> Wait a minute, where are you going? Well, you find out for yourself. Chief, what you doing? I said I'm staying on track. See, I'm getting ready to do something, and I don't want to miss what God is doing. See, Bishop, this is why I don't like to talk to you when I'm doing what God gave me. Because I spoke to you about something, and it's, it's running rampage through my mind. And if I, I say it, it's going to end my message before what God wants to do. Why then was the Lord given at all? It was added because of what transgression until the seed to whom the promise referred has come. The Lord was given through angels and entrusted to what? A mediator. Let me ask you a question. Why so much legalistic going on now? Come on. Why all of a sudden God is using terms that is not normal? Because God, you shouldn't be doing this because after all, we are your children. What on earth are you talking about? A promise this and, and, and a mediator and this and this and that. I, I'm not supposed to be your child. Why do we have to have all these middle people? And until they see what? He says, you forgot you were a curse. Chief, what you talking about? He says, you forgot you were a curse. So in order for you to become a child of mine, I have to send my son to become a curse and redeem you from your curse so you can now become my child. See, that to me a transfer. I'm going to transfer my son to you, and you're going to transfer your curse unto him. My, my, my. This is good. Slow down, boy. Am I going too fast? Mm -mm. Am I boring? No. Am I making sense? Yes. Jesus, I'm making sense to tell me. You see, I love my deacon. I love him. He's keeping me on course. I don't know what Bishop is doing, but the camera missed me for a whole moment. But I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. I'm back. I got 23 minutes. Tony, I feel like I want to preach now. Hit me with that, please. Now I feel like I'm going to preach. A mediator, however, implies more than one party, but God is what? One. Okay, this is not making sense. It's too much legalistic. There's too much legal terms. Bishop, am I missing a paper over here? No. Okay.
feel my hair coming now. Y'all doing good? Yes, sir. Are y'all doing good? Are y'all cold? Pastor Bree says she cold. You cold too deep? Okay. I'll tell the family. Sins. 
rather than letting Jesus Christ pay for it, where would we be today? See, when the blessings become a curse, that's when it becomes the redemption. Jesus has become a curse so he can redeem you and I from our curse. Oh, you didn't see that coming. When the blessing becomes a curse, redemption comes in place.
Whatever is going on is for real, so you need to protect yourself. Amen. But I won't link it to COVID. If it's true, then if you spray the life soul, it should kill it. Let me say it again. If it's true, and you spray a life soul, it should kill it. Because on the back of the life soul can, it says it killed the COVID virus. It didn't say it killed COVID unless it, it killed COVID viruses. It was plural. So the event that it covers every COVID virus that will ever come out. So how can we start killing this? Ha! But tell you that! Because greatest that faint fullness Lord of Him and Bishop. But God in his grace gave it to Abraham through a promise. Imagine that! And you get the promise so that we may be saved. <laughs> Keep going, Bishop. Keep going. Why then was the law given at all? It was added because of transgression mm. until the seed to whom the promise referred had come. So until Jesus comes, nothing changes. So then, wait a minute. Okay, go ahead, wait a minute. Go ahead, Bishop, because I think I'm about to go ahead of you. So go ahead, let me give you some room first. The law was given through angels and entrusted to a mediator. Back up some more. Why? I see. Go to it was added. Why then was the law given at all? It was added because of the transgressions until the seed to whom the promise referred had come. Hmm. So until Jesus comes, nothing changes. Okay, go ahead. The law was given through angels and entrusted to a mediator. Okay. A mediator, however, implies more than one party, mm -hmm. but God is one. Mm -hmm. Is the law therefore opposed to the promises of God? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Okay. For if a law had been given that could impart life, then righteousness would certainly have come by the law. But scripture has locked up everything under the control of sin so that what was promised being given through faith in Christ Jesus might be given to those who will So now Abraham receives the promise but the promise is not given to us until the seed comes. See why you have to be saved? That promise is never given to you until you receive Jesus Christ. Because if you don't receive him, you have not seen the seed yet. So you're going to tell me, Chief, that all this hellish Christ that I'm going through is because I have not opened my heart to receive Jesus Christ the way that you receive him? Absolutely. Ah. Uh, Bishop, shoot the dog for me for a second. Love feel 
far go the wrong way, you go wrong. That's the rush. Do you all have your seats here? Thank you. Do you all have your seat here? You need an envelope for your seat. I'm running out of time. I have one minute, less than a minute.
Do I know why? Can you give me a hand for a second, please? All that is 
left behind. Father, we sow this seed into you. Father, I thank you. Not only do I represent myself, but I also represent my father. The seed that they've sown. If you have your seed, you can get up and come through. Bishop, I think you might want to. You know, social media, let me say this. We love you. If you are home, if you are home and you're watching, and you want God's blessing, Father, I pray for whatever dog that they are facing in their house. That you let the anointing fall on that door as they walk through that door in their house. Father, remember them and bless them beyond riches. Father, let the anointing fall on them double. Increase yes. their blessings, oh God. We thank you. Now, Father, let your favor fall upon them as you do the same with us over here. I thank you in advance for what you're going to do with them. Sweep over their souls, oh God, and speak, and I speak blessings over everyone's life who's watching. If you have your doors at home, I know you do. Walk through your doors. As we walk through these doors and we drop our seeds into this basket, you walk at home and watch what God is going to do for you. And I will lay my hands on you as you walk through these doors. Please be careful as you walk through. God, I pray and thank you for your Lord. Father, I cancel every assignment of the enemy. I cancel every assignment of the enemy. Bishop, don't get that one, son. I cancel every assignment of the enemy.
his eager willingness spirit to always want to serve you. Thy Father bless him, use him, and make him great. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, thank you for your Lord. Father, she is in 2022. No longer in 2021. Whatever the enemy planned for her in 2021, I thank you that you have, you have eradicated. You have set her free. And Father, let that anointing, the blessing, double blessing, double anointing fall fresh upon her. Father, open doors beyond measure. That nobody could close because you've opened. Father, let your blessings chase her down like never before. Favor a prayer upon her life. Your favor. Father, increase her as you use her to do your will. Father, thank you for her life. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Okay. Nobody else want to come? Okay. I have walked through. You know, the interesting thing is I'm looking at you on your faces. I said, Happy New Year. And y'all sat there like the New Year did not matter to y'all. Did it matter to you? Yes. People of the world are shooting firecrackers out there. John. Again. But listen, as the law says, forget the former things, do not warn the past. See, I am doing a new thing. What is new? He says, now it springs in. Now, it wasn't last year, it wasn't the year before that, it wasn't the year before that year. He says, now. Why now? Not until now. Because I want to let you understand that you are no longer a curse, but you are a redeemed soul. You are no longer a curse, but you are a redeemed soul. My blessings will chase after you. How? Because I'm making way in the wilderness. And I'm making streams in the wasteland. I am going to give you streams that my blessings will chase you now that you won't have enough room to receive it. 2022 is going to be the year. Mark my, my words where it cannot be erased. God's blessings is going to chase you now if you listen to the voice of God. Notice there's a clause in there. If you listen to the voice of God. God is not an Indian giver, but God will pull you here. I can assure you of that. The year of double anointing, double blessing. Isn't it amazing? We just left the year of refocusing on the Lord Jesus Christ. You mean to tell me, if you focus on him, this is what happens? Yes. He blesses you. How? This is what we do. Do it with me. So when I release you to do, it's not hard for you to do. Because all you're going to do is repeat what you can see me do and you did with me. What is that? You let your heart thirst after righteousness. say this to you, be faithful. I don't know about you, but I know about this. If you listen to God, 
The same way he kept you in 2021. Yes, thank you, Jesus. From danger seen and unseen. He will do that double this year. Whatever the struggles you went through in 2021, he is getting ready to give you double the blessing. Whatever pain you went through last year, he is going to double your blessing this year. If you fear that and you listen to him, notice I say, if you fear that, he says, For I have not given you the spirit of fear. Why? Because you cannot be my child, be afraid. Love, son of mine. If the presence of the Lord is in this place, then why would you ever be afraid? Yes. 2022 is here. 2021 is gone. I don't care what you do. You will never see 2021 ever again. So can I ask you a question? Why on earth do you want to carry 2021 into 2022? Jesus. Whatever you were doing in 2021 before it ended, you need to leave it right there with it. Because those of us who go through that door, mark my words, where can that be erased? Your life will never be the same again. Why? You will see the hand of God guide you, lead you, protect you, and it will also rebuke you Amen. if you stray from Him. Like my words were going to be erased. You will feel Him rebuking you. But you will feel him protecting you as well. Because he says, those are love I chase. He says, for how I kept you safe in 2021, I'm about to do it better than that in 2022. He said, how you listen to my voice and you said, as for you, go to your house. Close the door behind you for a while. Wait for my drive to pass by. Why? Because I don't need you to see my wrath. While you listened to me and you did what I said, my wrath passed you by. Listen so my wrath does not come back to you. Because this is the year of double blessing, double anointing. David says, For I have what? Eating the word of God. And it became the joy and the rejoicing of my soul. If that is true, then the song playing is true. And if that is true, that God is never a liar because he cannot lie. He's not a man that he will lie to you. The year of double. The blessing. Double. The anointing. Mark my words, boy, can I be raised? If God was using you as a prophet, he's going to double that. Whatever anointing you put on your life, he's going to double it as you walk with him.
as the sun has set, and I close. In the night, I remember your name. Oh Lord, I will keep your laws. This has been my practice. I obey your precepts. You are my portion. Oh Lord, I have promised to obey your words. Did you hear what he says? I have promised to obey your words. I sought your face with all of my heart, not a portion of my heart. I sought your face. I was looking for you with all of my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. Be gracious to me according to your promise. Remember your word to your servant. For you have given me hope. Remember your word to your servant. For you have what? Given me hope. For 2022. If you remember these last sentences, remember your word to your servant. For you have given me hope every time you face a challenge. You repeat those words back to God and see what he'll do for you. But promise me one thing. That you will seek out the God with all of your heart. And if you can seek out the God with all of your heart, I promise you, come March, you won't have enough room to receive all the blessings that he's going to send you away. Like my words, where can I be erased? I did not come with proper messages to make you feel great and shout and I just stay on the track and let him pull me all the way in. If you wanted a good message, you should have been here Sunday. Wasn't the message good on Sunday? Yes. Faith, you faith, I'm talking to you. Message was good on Sunday, right? That was the last message of the year. Today was encouraging you to cross over into this new year. See, last year I preached hard. The year before I preached hard. This year he said, don't preach hard. Because tomorrow I got to come back and preach hard. Tomorrow Sunday. Today is Saturday. It is after 12 o'clock. Somebody threw a Bible at that person today. <laughs> she don't know her days. Tomorrow is Sunday. You remember we're in 2022. Today is the first. The first of January, 2022. You hear that? Unfaithfulness. Morning by morning. His new mercies I see. What else?
I am eager and waiting for that one. With great anticipation. D. D. D, you ready? You ready? It's a new faith. We thank you. And social media, we thank you. We love you. We bless you. We pray God's blessings upon you. And we wish you again Happy New Year, both new Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. God be with you. And all his blessings be upon you. Amen. Amen.